Hello, everyone. My name is Sid Powar, and I'm the Supply Chain Center of Excellence Director at Akili. And today I'm going to demo statistical forecasting using Anaplan. For statistical forecasting, predictive modeling and forecasting techniques are applied to the data set, generating a quantitatively, quantitatively reliable picture of the future to assist your decision making. Statistical analysis and forecasting represents a broad range of techniques, and it is used in all sectors such as manufacturing and consumer goods, healthcare and pharmaceuticals, finance and banking, insurance and reinsurance, pharmaceuticals, aerospace and defense, energy and utilities, and others. Statistical forecasts are often used as the baseline forecast for demand planning. Due to this reason, statistical forecast accuracy is critical to improving the entire demand planning process. So let's dive into the Anaplan platform. So here uh, on, in the Anaplan platform, I am displaying the Plan IQ, the proprietary software at Anaplan uh, for statistical forecasting. On this dashboard, what you'll notice is that at the top, I have the algorithm forecast accuracy. Here I have different methods that are being displayed uh, for forecast accuracy drivers. We have MAPE, which is mean absolute percent error, uh, RMSC, which is root mean square error, uh, mean absolute deviation and bias. And all the different algorithms that are available for a forecast analyst. Uh, we have some uh, regression methods, some exponential smoothing methods, and uh, other uh, seasonal and trend analysis uh, for methods. So on the screen, you'll notice that as a forecast analyst, I have an option to choose which accuracy driver I prefer. I could add multiple other uh, forecast, uh, forecast accuracy drivers if I choose to do it, but uh, best practice, I've got these four displayed up here, and I have as a analyst, I can choose one of those. Alternatively, I also can come down here and let's say that this, uh, the system is recommending that I use additive de decomposition for this particular skew that I have chosen uh, up here. If I adjust that, um, the option will change. And then I can also override using different uh, forecast methods if I choose to use a completely different method for forecasting. And then at the bottom over here, you'll notice that we have some charts that are used for looking at all the different um, accuracy metrics for all the different algorithms. I can look at my history and, and unit retro forecast. I can look at historical units as well. And then I can open up any other plan IQ details to look at the underlying uh, calculations. In this case, I have multiple algorithms displayed over here for this particular SKU. And then by week, it's going to display the different um, uh, error percentages uh, over here. And it's, um, it's also going to display a chart for uh, you know different uh, algorithms that I'm going to choose up here. So once I have this information as an analyst, I can also go into uh, outlier correction and look at, uh, again, we can choose the same SKU or uh, any other SKU if we wanted to. But uh, as an analyst, I can choose an identification method that allows me to correct any outliers. So I have uh, standard deviation, uh, as well as a few other uh, errors uh, or identification methods that I can choose. In this case, I'm gonna choose standard deviation. And I can also choose how many um, standard deviations I want the tool to choose. So if I go to three standard deviations instead of two, it uh, should shrink the um, uh, the upper and lower bound here. Once I see that this has been the case, um, then I can also adjust to capture more errors or less uh, outliers that I want to adjust and I can do some smoothing uh, or outlier correction activities. In this case, you notice that the chart is now displaying um, you know, with a tight sigma and the tight deviation that all these red dots are outliers based on the selection that I've made. And I can then use uh, some types of um, you know, uh, method to correct it automatically instead of individually having to correct each single dot. I can just apply uh, average of future periods as a method uh, to correct all these outliers. Now, once the system has done that uh, outlier correction, as an analyst, I can then uh, go back and you'll notice that all these red dots have been corrected down uh, as the new uh, adjusted points. And um, you know, as I'm, I'm going through these correction process for outliers, I can also look at different SKUs and what are the different outliers that need to be addressed. At the bottom over here, you'll notice that there are some points uh, of outlier correction that I can then come in here and select each one if I want to keep as outlier, if I don't want it adjusted, 
And I can uh, choose what my manual override value is and then put in reason. Uh, I can have some predetermined reasons uh, established and then I can assign uh, some values. As I do that, you'll notice that the table to the right will also update depending on kind of what you know values I've adjusted. And if I come in here and I add values, it's going to uh, include uh, that on the table to the right over here. Um, I can come in here, add some commentary as well. And uh, once I've done that, I can go ahead and refresh that. And uh, as I am in the process of analyzing all these outliers, I can then see that my special pricing for this particular year has been also updated with the dollar amount. And this gives me a good way to do some demand planning on the fly. And then let's dive into some error reviews. From a forecast uh, accuracy standpoint, I want to be able to look at any errors that are occurring. And then I want to go in here and uh, be able to select you know, a different um, reason code for any forecast errors. So I have some predetermined uh, forecast error codes, such as promo or lost customers or demand increase, decrease, what have you. And I can uh, put in those error codes in here, and then I can add some commentary around it, uh, discussed error. And as I'm doing that, it's going to show that it has been reviewed and uh, I can go ahead and notify sales through the platform as well that I have reviewed the errors. And I'm uh, also requesting some backup information if I need uh, inf information from sales. Uh, so as you can see, I can also do some bias um, you know, reviews uh, and look at different forecast issues um, here, whether it's a higher bias, lower bias, I can capture all those issues with my statistical forecasting process. And so with that, um, I thank you for your time today. And this is the best way to contact us through akili.com, as well as you can contact me on LinkedIn or via email as displayed on the screen. And once again, I hope this demo was useful for you. And thank you for your time. Have a good day.